Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make like a support to hold up bits of the track that are kind of stuck off the floor. So a good thing to do here might be to quickly chuck a plane into the scene. And so we can say that roughly the ground level is going to be around there. Might just change the colour of this off that horrible garish pink. And now what we want to do is actually make a support. So what we want this to actually do is fit around this part of the track. So what we might do is find a nice kind of flat section. I'm thinking probably kind of around here is quite flat. So if you select your track and go to the loft and then go to add and edit poly modifier on top. What we're going to do is just select this section here. Although it's not, you know, from the top view it's not straight, we can rotate it when we detach it. And come over to the detach option, go to settings and do detach as clone. And we'll call that, no, we'll just leave it as object one. Hit OK and then come out of edit poly. And if you just click, you should see it actually selects this OK. Let's pull this out to here. And then we will go to our top view using T on the keyboard and then Z to frame. Come over to the hierarchy tab, this one here, and just do effect pivot only, center to object. And now if you go to rotate mode, you can just roughly kind of rotate this into place. Okay, so now we'll go into vertex mode go to scale and then just scale in to get this nice and straight in fact if you just select a row of vertices here let's go to F3 um, then what you can do is use this make planar tool oops <laughs> went the wrong way um, it's not liking that very much so we'll forget that tool and we'll just carry on using scale We'll just scale in like so and you can see what I'm doing I'm basically making each kind of row nice and straight so we've got a completely kind of straight object to work from in fact if I just go to view axis that tool might now work nope so let's carry on using this My idea here basically is to make the support from this shape. So we know that's kind of roughly the right shape. So what we'll do, we'll go to, I'm really not going to mess about too much with this. It's going to extrude these out, select these, extrude these out like this. Extrude that out as well. Pull that down. And then what we can do is extrude this down here, like this. In fact, we'll use now we'll use extrude first. and bevel this down and then extrude again now remember using F3 to go back to solid mode and let's pull this down and notice how I've got a few a couple of holes in the model here so let's just seal those up And if you just use the select two edges and use bridge, you can do it on multiple selections if I'm honest. I should be able to come around here. I'll just show you using multiple selections. So bridge and bridge. OK, 
Okay, also what I'm going to do is just apply a different material to this. So there's this material here. So I can see that it looks a bit better. Okay, so we've got a rough support in place. We might need to actually just scale this out somewhat. What I'm going to do is come over to my hierarchy tab. So you notice the pivots out there. And just do a line to weld. Now I can just switch this out a little bit. Okay, so now we have a rough support in place. Now what we can do is actually use a tool called the spacing tool and then use this original path to align these up. So to do that, what we do is first of all uh, select our object, then go to tools, align, spacing tool. And now you see the options we have, we have pick path here, so let's just do that straight away. And you'll see what it's done is it's actually created um, this is a bit annoying thing by the way, the preview will just randomly turn off. So if I select the shape then go line one and then pick the line, it will appear, but if I do any kind of motion like this, it will vanish. So just bear that in mind. Um, so we'll increase the count to say 20. And there they are. And then another thing we'll do is we'll tick on follow. So I actually follow the path like so. Now another thing we need to do is actually move this path back into line with our Um, back in line with our shape. So we'll select this and pick path and pick our path again. And there we go, we can see we've actually got our kind of supports in place. Now obviously some of them aren't pushing through the floor but um, just, for this, just for this demo, if I just hit apply now so I might have needed to tweak some other settings, but we'll just leave apply on there. If I come over to my original shape, press 4 to go to edit poly mode, F3 to go to wire and just select that base, and I should be able to just pull that down and they all come down with it, like so. So literally any changes I need to make, I can do on this original one here. If we zoom in to roughly where our vehicle would be, you'll see now we've got that, these kind of nice supports holding it up. Uh, they're not they're not all yet lined up with the floor, so let's just drag that down and make sure they're all there. And obviously you've got stuff like this going on, but you're never going to see under there anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's how we make the supports. Now the next thing we might want to do is actually have a different material on parts of our track. So this is where loft is cool again, because if I select a polygon here and then scroll down, you see this is ID1, so if I do select, oh no, it's actually left them all, I can actually delete this edit poly and come down to loft, and I'm sure there's a way of making it select, create different IDs. Okay, so I figured that out. There is a way to do it. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it and you can decide if you want to use it or not basically. It's the best way to do it I think. But if you come over to Loft and then go to Shape um, and then go to Vertex Mode you'll see you've got the shape actually in here. So if I just select all the verts, there's my shape. Now, what you can actually do is just break the vertices where you want to have a different texture. So if I hit break here, then that means this uh, main road bit will be one texture, and then this whole rest of it will be another. So I think I'm going to break these four here. So if I now hit break, then F3, you'll see the text has changed. So if I come over to loft, do hide unselected, 
you'll see that underneath, um, sorry, and then in your loft settings, set width repeat to one. You see we've got one version of the texture underneath, one on the side bit there, one on the side bit there, and one here. Now that's exactly what I want, basically. It means that I can have one different texture here, one different texture here, one here, and one on the underside. So unhide all again. So to demonstrate how this works, just in case you haven't completely understood me, if we come back into Photoshop, we'll make another new texture, again 1024. And I'm just going to put like dark grey on this, so Alt Delete, fill in there. And maybe I'll put like a light grey, so a new layer, Alt Delete, and up here, Alt Delete, and here, Alt Delete as well. And we'll save this as our next texture. So we'll call this Wipeout Track 2. And come back into 3ds Max. Um, and we might as well make our side panel texture as well. So I'm actually just going to use this same texture here. So I'm going to turn this off. Well, I'm going to make a new group. And I'm going to call this Main. And just put that arrow in there. Then make another new layer and call this sides, like so. Then insides, I'm going to make a new layer. And we'll give this a slightly kind of different colour. That layer is going to need to go above there so it's visible. And then inside, all I'm going to do is literally just make a couple of white strips. I'm not going to do anything more complex than that for now. So the point here is basically anytime I want to save my main texture, I turn off sides, turn on main. Anytime I want to save the sides texture, I turn off main, turn on sides like that. I do file, save as, and call this wipeout track sides. Okay, so back in 3ds Max, what we want to do now is apply an edit poly. Go to polygon mode, and now if I select a side bit here and do select ID. Oh, it still hasn't. Okay, so it's done our mapping for us, but it hasn't done into ID. So what we'll do is just do this ourselves. So if you select a polygon, hold shift and click on the next polygon, that'll select the strip. And we'll set that. You see you've got set ID in your polygon material IDs. So set that to two and then we'll select this other side, hold shift, left click the next one, set that one to two, and then go underneath the track and do the same, but this time select all those. And we'll also need these little side panels, remember, and then we'll set that one to three. So easy enough to do, uh, so now if I come into my polygon mode and select a polygon, in ID I can select ID 1, or ID 2, or ID 3, and there's my three different materials. So let's open the material editor, and we'll use our old material, but go up to the parent, and in the standard tab, just select a multi sub object. Make sure you keep the old material as sub material. And you'll see now this will allow us to have, well, it's actually up to 99 different materials on each model. Uh, now, obviously, we only need three here, so we'll set this to three. 
and you see it's got an ID number here. And if I go to my polygon mode, these IDs we just set down here refer to these IDs here. So we can see ID 1 is our track and that has our original material on it. Go to parent again. So let's go into ID 2, select standard, and in our diffuse slot, select bitmap and then select our sides. Okay, we'll make those visible. So there's our side material. It's not displaying that one, so come in and make that one visible. And then in ID3, again, drop another standard material. And in the diffuse slot, select bitmap. And this time we'll drop our track 2. Which I can make that one visible as well. Hide unselected. Now you can see we've got our bot material there, our other material on the side, and our original arrow material on the base. Now, obviously, you want slightly better textures than these, really, for your. Um, uh, for your wipeout tracks, but these are just kind of temporary materials. You can now come into Photoshop and just paint up each one to have kind of a good level of detail. Okay, so that's the basics for creating a wipeout track. Obviously, with this, this would need to be textured as well. So um, yeah, you'd have to buy your own texture to that and stuff like that. Um, but the next thing I would do just to show you for a track like this is to actually just start blocking in kind of details of kind of buildings and stuff like that. Which So you can then come up with your camera angles and just hold shift to copy. And scale this one, let me scale it down. So you can then start coming up with kind of camera angles that you're going to use for your animation, or if you're making a video game, you'd use this to as a kind of placeholders for defining the track design. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at then is actually creating a trail. Because that's the other question I get asked a lot. Creating a trail that comes out from behind the vehicle similar to the game itself.